Greetings everyone and welcome to the Inside EV's range test of the BMW 530e based on the facelifted version of the 5 series. It has a 12 kilowatt hour battery pack which is uh, bigger than the pre-facelift version's 9.2 kilowatt hour pack and according to the WLTP test cycle this should uh, be enough for a one charge range of around 50 kilometers. However, I think that's optimistic and the EPA is actually far closer to predicting this car's actual electric only range because the EPA says it should do around 20 miles. And my trip computer says that I should be able to drive on electricity alone for 31 kilometers, so nearly 20 miles. The first part of the range test will be performed outside the city on ring roads and highways then I will charge the car back up again to 100% and do another range test in the city at speeds not exceeding 40 miles an hour. I have a few miles to go before I can uh, reach the faster roads I'm going to do the first range test on, the high speed range test on. So I'm going to keep the car in battery control mode and I'm going to set the target value to 100%. And in the meantime, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this car. The BMW 530e debuted way back in 2016 with a 9.2 kilowatt hour battery pack. This latest facelifted version of the 530e has a larger 12 kilowatt hour battery pack, which according to the EPA should provide 21 miles of range for rear wheel drive examples or 18 miles of range for uh, x-drive equipped all-wheel drive examples such as the one that i'm driving today this car is also a luxury line model and it comes uh, very well equipped in the us the 530e costs from fifty seven thousand two hundred dollars for the rear wheel drive model or if you want x-drive that bumps the price up to fifty nine thousand five hundred it is eligible for the federal tax credit of up to $5,836. Since this is a um, press vehicle, it is really well specced and it's got like twenty or $30,000 worth of options. Okay, so we're just outside the city's ring road. I grabbed a bite to eat and I'm ready to do the highway range test. The car is still in battery control mode and it is fully charged all the way to 100% and it is indicating a maximum range of 31 kilometers. The outside temperature is around, uh, well, it's around freezing. It stops snowing, which is good, but the roads are wet. I have the um, heater set to a fairly low setting. I have the passenger's area turned off. The climate for the rear is also turned off. The heated seat is also turned off and oh i do have the heated steering wheel on okay so we're merging onto the ring road and i'm going to switch from battery control mode into electric mode and i'm also going to reset the trip uh, meter the 530e can drive on electricity alone at speeds of up to 87 miles per hour I might need to put the rear uh, defogger on. That's gonna sap some juice, but not a lot, right? So I'm enabling the cruise control, setting it to exactly 70. Okay, so we're doing 70 now. That's 112 kilometers per hour. Range has already dropped to 27 kilometers. I am going to approach the highway now the last roundabout oh that's very interesting as I was braking to approach this uh, roundabout which takes me to the highway I gained another kilometer of range it was showing 27 and now it's back up to 28 boy this car is really quiet in electric only mode it's quiet when the engine starts up, but this latest uh, 5 Series is um, very, very refined. 
Okay, so I'm merging onto the highway now. Setting the cruise control. 112 kilometers per hour. So the 530E, like I said previously, has been around since 2016. But as per the recent facelift, BMW has increased its uh, battery capacity from 9.2 kilowatt hours to 12 kilowatt hours. I think there's an intermediate version that is not the facelift, but it has a, a 10 kilowatt hour. I, I think BMW updated the pre-facelift model's battery at some point. This car pairs a two liter turbocharged engine with an electric motor that is built into the gearbox. The gas engine makes around 180 horsepower and the electric motor makes over 100, but BMW quotes their combined uh, power output as being 288 horsepower. This is enough to send this big car to 60 miles per hour from standstill in under six seconds. The battery pack is located behind the rear axle and it somewhat intrudes into the trunk, reducing its capacity by uh, 100 liters. It's still 410 liters, which in cubic feet is this much, but you can definitely notice that it is slightly shallower than the trunk of any other non-electrified 5 Series. As you'd expect with a plug-in hybrid, the 530E's battery pack makes it heavier than a comparable 530i, for instance. The weight difference is uh, around 500 pounds. So a 530E with a rear wheel drive only weighs 4,220 pounds, whereas a 530i with rear wheel drive weighs 3,765 pounds. X-Drive also adds just over 100 pounds, so with X-Drive, the 530E tips the scales at 4,321 pounds. Its top speed is electronically limited to 130 miles an hour, although you can have that optionally raised to 146 miles an hour, but you also need to opt for different wheels and tires. And it probably affects the range, although I didn't find any specific information on that. So the battery has just dipped below the halfway point and I've covered 18 kilometers and I still have 13 kilometers left to go. Okay, I've reached the turnaround point. So far I've covered 21.1 kilometers with 11 kilometers uh, predicted left. Again, for this bit of on and off ramps, and slipways, I'm not going to be able to uh, maintain 70. But I'll be back on the highway really soon. So I don't think this matters as much. Like 99% of the test was performed on the highway, so it should be accurate. Since this car doesn't have a sport suspension, stiffened sport suspension, it rides really, really beautifully. It also has rear steer, which makes it very easy to maneuver and you feel like you're driving a uh, smaller and lighter car than what I mentioned this behemoth weighs because it is quite a big car even though it's a mid-sized car it's big okay so I've merged back onto the highway direction home we've done 25.9 kilometers 26 kilometers now and we have six kilometers left in the battery according to the car I think there's definitely a chance that we might exceed the conservative um, EPA rating for this car, 18 miles on electricity alone. But you know, usually when you drive uh, electric or electrified cars in their electric mode at higher speeds, closer to highway speeds, you should expect to achieve a lower range than what the car is rated for because its electric range is not uh, tested exclusively at 70 miles per hour or higher speeds. And the fact that you can achieve the claimed number or even exceed it at highway speeds in uh, miserable winter conditions with wet roads and wind and um, unpleasantness everywhere is impressive. 
Okay, we're almost out of charge. We have two kilometers left. One kilometer left. Okay, it says I don't have any more charge in the battery. It's still going. Engine hasn't started up yet. 33 kilometers. And I think the car just started up its engine. So yeah, after 33.2 kilometers, the car switched back to, um, to hybrid mode, which is its default mode. 33.2 kilometers at 70 miles per hour. Okay, so I'm going to charge it back up and we will uh, see what it does in town. So it's about three hours later. At first I wanted to just charge the car driving around in, uh, in battery, battery control mode and uh, having the target set to 100%, but I just got bored of driving around aimlessly and I just left the car to charge and it took around three hours to charge fully. So now it's back up at 100%. It's showing 31 kilometers of range, of pure electric range. And we're gonna hit the city and see how far this takes us. So let's go. I just wanted to point out the fact that um, while I do have the HVAC system turned on, I have AC disabled and I had it disabled for the highway range test as well. Okay, I'm going to reset the trip meter again. Put the car in electric mode, drive, and away we go. So now it just dropped after a few seconds of driving from 31 to 30 kilometers. Hey, hey look at the swans. I live in a part of town where there are lots of lakes and all sorts of wildlife. I really have to give BMW credit for the way they, um, they are handling the plug-in hybrid problem. All of their PHEVs are very smooth, they have very responsive and progressive brakes. So in some plug-in hybrids, because the brake pedal has to modulate both the, um, uh, the region of the electric motor, and then the application of the physical brakes, the disc brakes, the pedal feel is inconsistent. As uh, Kyle pointed out in the um, Toyota RAV4 Prime review, he didn't like the pedal feel, the brake pedal feel in that car. He said it was inconsistent. Like sometimes the car wanted more regen and there was no more regen to give and the pedal felt uh, mushy and uh, not confidence inspiring. But this is now, I think the fifth, maybe sixth, a BMW plug-in hybrid that I've driven and I've never gotten that in any of the models. I also recently drove the Mercedes C300DE diesel electric plug-in hybrid version of that uh, C-Class and while the brake feel was good in that car it's better in the BMW. Shocking, I know. BMW makes nice to drive sporty feeding cars. Yeah, it's a shock. We're mostly going to be traveling on uh, side streets because we're approaching rush hour and the main avenues are um, going to be almost completely gridlocked. Even though it's not one of the biggest uh, cities in uh, Europe, at around uh, 2 million uh, inhabitants without the metropolitan area, Bucharest is the most congested with the worst traffic. So yeah, and I have chosen one of the worst hours to um, try to perform this uh, urban range test. So I'm going to stick to the side streets, but I will take this car on the occasional avenue. I really hope I get to, um, to drain this battery before, before nighttime, because the GoPro won't really be able to handle um, nighttime shooting, and I don't have any lights on me, so. We'll see how that goes. 
I'm also curious by how much I'm going to exceed um, the result that I achieved on the highway, which was around uh, 33 kilometers, 32-ish, 33. I want to see if I can uh, maybe get it closer to 40 kilometers. That's still a bit off what uh, BMW claims for this car based on the WLTP test cycle. But if I hit 40, I will feel like I have achieved something. So let's see how this goes. Man, it's really getting dark. Come on, battery. Just drain already. Okay, so we've just uh, dropped under 50% after 15.3 kilometers. And the car predicts we can still travel for another 12 kilometers. So let's see how that goes. I've not really been driving it particularly economically. But I have had fun driving it around the city in electric mode. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but um, it gets the job done of getting you around. So yeah, it looks like this right now. I do have quite a bit to go and I'll check back with you when it's about to run out. Okay, so we are down to the last two kilometers and like three or four percent left in the battery. And it may be due to my driving style, but I came nowhere near uh, achieving the same uh, range that I did on the highway cruising almost constantly at 70 miles per hour, I managed to drive the car some 33 kilometers, just a little bit over 20 miles. And uh, in town, on side streets, um, on congested um, avenues and uh, congested larger streets, and generally in a congested uh, rush hour environment, so far I've driven it for uh, 24.6 kilometers. And it says that I have one more kilometer left to go. Okay, so I have no more kilometers. I'm expecting the gas engine to fire up any second now. Still running on electricity. Will I hit 26? Nope, still on electricity, 26.1. Okay, it's finally switched, 26.5. So yeah, what's the moral of our test today? Well, basically, if you drive a car at um, consistent speed, you don't push it too hard. Even if it's at a relatively higher speed, like 70 miles per hour, you can achieve the EPA claim or for the X drive where the EPA claim was 18 miles you can even exceed it this video has literally taken me nearly all day to make I'm surprisingly tired for um, just conducting a range test I thought it was gonna be easier Tom Mulogany also recently tested a plug-in hybrid BMW that's also his first video for the Inside EVs uh, US channel. But the X5 he drove was the 45E and that has a battery pack that's twice the capacity of this. Sadly, BMW did not fit its 30E branded models with that larger battery pack because then they would have become really quite tempting. But even so, a realistic real world range of between, I don't know, 18 to 21 miles is still a pretty good result, especially for people who, um, who don't have a long commute. This makes a lot of sense, or especially here in Europe, where there are uh, more and more uh, internal combustion engine free zones. So you can only drive either an electric car or a plug-in hybrid in its EV mode. This makes a lot of sense. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching and take care.